welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because we cannot do life and life to the fullest without Jesus. You guys get excited. Oh, I'm so pumped for this one. I grew up on a lake, water skiing, not near as good as our guest today, Christy Overton Johnson. She's with Christy Overton Johnson Ministries. She's a former professional water skier. She has so many titles in water skiing, breaking records, a world champion, a record holder, a world record holder, a hall of famer. And she has a magazine that she founded and she publishes called Victorious Living Magazine. And it's published in prisons. So we're all about broadcasting God's love, no matter our platform. And this is just to show you some diversity. We've got Christy on today. Hey, Christy. Hi, Ricky. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited. I'm like, you're making me excited. <laughs> yes. So we're all about taking our platforms, whatever they are, like you could work in fast mm-hmm. food or you could be a doctor and you yeah. just use your platform for God's game. You know, I like, yeah, you are one of those people. And I've been watching your YouTube videos from when you were a world champion water skier and girl, you are giving the glory to God. And I love that. Has it always been like that for you? Just giving the glory to God? Well, I always knew from a very young age, I I grew up, I was very thankful that I grew up in a Christian family. And so I always knew that God had given me anything good in my life. God, it had come from God. So I knew that. And but the extent of my glorifying God that I, the only way I knew to do it was to publicly say on the top of a podium on ESPN is I just want to thank God for this win. (laughs) So, you know, which is good, but, and, and I tried to live a life that, you know, that lined up with the word of God. But what I didn't understand is there's so many other ways to glorify God other than just saying, I want to give God thanks for this win. And what the Lord showed me is he had given me that platform, which is exactly what you're talking about. He had given me all these opportunities to use to bring people in to a relationship with him. And it's the activities and the gifts and the talents and the things that I was good at and was passionate about. Those were the things God wanted to use, but those were the very things I thought he would take away from me. I thought if I totally surrendered to God, he's going to take my skiing away. No, what he wanted to do was take all those world championship trophies and world records and all that kind of stuff and use them as a platform for me to be able to develop relationships with people, whether it's other competitors, whether it's people I get to teach to water ski, or whether we're going to talk about later, whether it's prisoners, where he opens up a door for me to start taking my boat into prison and gives me a whole new platform to talk about, you know, looking around and seeing, okay, here I am standing on the platform of a literal platform of my ski boat on this platform that God has given me of being able to speak life and hope in people. So that's going to be a fun story to share how God took me from water ski lakes to prison yards. But you know, he, he uses everything and he uses the things that you do not think are big in your life, or maybe the things you just thought were a sport or an activity or a hobby. Those are the things you build relationships with people And then you get to minister to the hearts of people. That's how you glorify God. Not just saying, I want to thank God, (laughs) give him the glory, which is good, but it goes a little bit further. Okay. Now I can develop relationships because, Hey, I'm a plumber and I go in, you know, I'm not a plumber, but I'm just giving an example. (laughs) And as I'm plumbing someone's toilet and I'm talking to them and I, you know, I can deliver hope while I'm delivering help to their toilet. You know, I can encourage, I can leave a, you know, one of our magazines there that tells people's God stories. I can, you know, share your podcast. Hey, if you look down today, have you heard Ricky's podcast? So (laughs) there's so many ways that we can, you know, just minister hope and healing to people as we go about our day. Wow. Okay. So how do you get to a point of saying, okay, I'm a professional water skier. Cause I saw, I've seen your stories online. Like Mm-hmm. And I found out about you through Myra Monroe. She's a mutual friend of ours and she's been on the podcast. She's awesome. Uh, I'm like, man, I used to love skiing growing up. And then I look at your water skiing stuff and I'm like, this girl 
is making a sport out of it. I mean, I mean, I grew up near Cypress Gardens, which is now Legoland, you know, my family right. has deep roots in Cypress Gardens. So like I get uh, how you can have fun with water skiing, but I didn't know that you can take it to a competitive level where tensions are high, where you're mm -hmm. leaving uh, I don't know if they call them meets or I don't know what they could. We call them tournaments, competitions. Tur yeah. Tournaments. Yeah. And you're yeah. just like mad about whatever just oh, yeah. happened on the water. I mean, <laughs> you know, we would be mad if someone went too fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> how, how do you go from um, being a professional water skier, being, being a competitor and right. using your platform for God's game? When did that switch happen and how did that happen for you? Well, for me, I only ever knew water skiing as a competitive sport. So I learned to water ski at age four and I was entered in my first competitions at age five. So water skiing, like many sports, there's different disciplines, divisions and, and types uh, of water sports. So, you know, you've, you've, a lot of people have been to SeaWorld and Cypress Gardens where they have show skiing. Well, actually you're watching a show, but those athletes are then going to show ski competitions across the United States. And okay. so they're competing, like who has the best pyramid and who can barefoot the longest and, right. and who has the best comedy routine. You know, there is, yeah. it is an actual kind of like, um, you know, any sport, but then I was in what you would call traditional water skiing, which was slalom skiing, which you go through um, an obstacle course of buoys. There is um, trick skiing, which is kind of like gymnastics. Okay. on water and then jump where you go over a ramp you see who can go the furthest distance without splatting and so you have to ride it out yeah. so and then you also have like a lot of people know of wakeboarding and now the big thing is wake surfing and now there's wake foiling and there's barefooting and there's kneeboarding so there's all these different disciplines so i was in the traditional slalom trick and jump okay and at the age of five i entered my first tournament by the age of eight i was competing at at nationals and then age um, 10 I was in the open division at 10 years old competing against women 20 30 years old oh my goodness turned pro at 13 and so it's all I ever knew was pushing myself to get one more buoy one more foot and jump to squeeze one more trick in you know that had a point value to, to trick a certain amount of, of points and so it's it's all I ever knew and okay. who I ever the only thing I ever really was, was, you know, I was either a daughter or I was Christy the skier. <laughs> and I was by 10 years old, you know, I was getting boats given to me by 13, was getting paid to water ski. So it was my job. Wow. And, um, and with that came, you know, you had sponsors, you had to make sure that you were giving, you know, the glory, the credit to them on that podium, not just Jesus, but right. squeezing sponsors in you had to know how to do interviews you which has come in handy later in life yeah you had to know um you know just perform under pressure and so what happened is like I said it is all I ever knew but my identity as many athletes do became completely engrossed and um, built upon a foundation of being a performer okay. and being a perfectionist and being um, and pleasing people, whether it was my fans or I felt like I needed to please my parents, which I had, I have and had awesome parents that were never intentionally putting that pressure on me. But internally, I was this, I've got to perform, I've got to perform to the highest level, not just to beat somebody. It really was never about that. It was about, I always knew I could do better and push myself to do more. And it was really almost disease. I, I, I do go into prisons and I, I meet and speak with a lot of people with addictions and those addictions have, have led them to prison. And I'm like, my, my addiction was never alcohol or um, drugs or eating disorders or pornography. It was performing, people pleasing and being perfect. Mm. But at the same time, I didn't want anybody to think I was perfect. So it was really a destructive cycle, you know, and it took me many, many years. It actually took water skiing being taken from me. And I say taken, I don't know how else to say it. It was just gone. It, I had a bowel obstruction from a former appendix surgery. This was in 1997 okay. and um, we were 
it was the eve of the U.S. Open Championships. I was the defending champion. And actually, the tournament was being held on our private lake. My dad built a lake called Lake Christie when I was 11, 12 years old for me to have a private place to build. And that sounds crazy. Um, for, excuse me, a private place to train. And that sounds crazy, but that wasn't super uncommon in okay. the water ski world because you really needed controlled environments. We had been training in salt water with jellyfish, lots of waves and wind and other boaters. And so my father also had a company called Overton's, which sells um, water sports. Camping World owns it now and Gander. So it, it sells all, I, anything. I know that. I know that company. Yeah. I grew up. Yeah, my daddy. you, girl. <laughs> I grew daddy. up yeah. in this. But I mean, not competitively. So when I heard your you name, I'm like, our catalog. my husband and I looked at each other. Yes, I've got your, yeah, I've got your catalog. Because he grew up in a town called Lake Placid. Okay. So oh, yeah. that tells you that. But um, yeah. he, we looked at each other and we're like, Overton, Overton's, Overton's, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. So anyway, sorry, keep going. keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, so it made kind of sense that we had that lake because he could test products on it. We held water sports events. It was where I trained. And um, so here we are at the eve of that U.S. Open Championships and I am deathly sick and mm -hmm. it turned to end up, but I'm also pregnant at the time. I'm studying for the bar exam as, to be an attorney. I went to the University of Florida, which I think okay. he did. Yes. Uh-huh. At the law school there. And and so all this stuff, but I, you know, was putting all this pressure and I just thought I was having a stomach attack. And it turned out I was having a major bowel obstruction and oh. came very close to dying during that experience. And but the thing that really woke me up is while I was hooked up to morphine and pregnant near death, all I could think about was how I could get to the lake to ski. Mm. because I could not imagine not being there to perform, not to being there to please people. I mean, people from this town where I lived in Greenville, North Carolina had come out to my lake to watch me ski. Mm. And, and so all this pressure. And then as I'm on the floor in a water ski position, curled up with a morphine pump saying, Tim, that's my husband, sneak me out to the lake. I think if I get out there, I can, I could put this pain out and I could, I could ski well enough that maybe I can keep my points for the next year. Or, it's just crazy. And it was at that moment, he just kind of looked at me and I knew I'm having an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. And so I went through, that was the second surgery, you know, the first was appendix in that. And then I ended up over the next decade having five bowel obstructions but many other surgeries, my pelvis reconstructed, my wrist, my knee, my neck fused, um, just <laughs> gallbladders, C-sections, you know, just all this stuff. There's like 16 surgeries. And, but the, the thing was, at the beginning, I thought, okay, God's punishing me because I must have done something wrong. That's kind of how my theology was. Okay. That if something's bad in your life, that God must be punishing me. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought God was taking it from me to teach me something. Okay. I look back now and I honestly believe that the enemy knew how wrapped up my identity was in water skiing and God knew it too. And, um, wherever it came from, whether it was the Lord saying, you know, I'm going to side on you a little bit, just not for your harm, but for your good, or whether it was the enemy saying, I'm going to take you out, whatever it was, what happened is instead of, I, I realized for the first time during that season in my life, with all those surgeries, that everything I had based my life on, my identity and water skiing, well, now water skiing was gone. All those trophies and titles, well, those trophies and titles and all that money I was winning wasn't jumping off the shelf and helping me. Mm. I was so sick and I was lonely and I was unable to perform and I didn't know who I was. And, and so my eyes, what happened is turned off of buoys, going around buoys and being a world champion and trophies to, okay, there's, if this is all there is in life, then I got a problem because this is pretty empty. Even though I have everything the world says I could have to be happy, I'm not and I'm empty, and I feel like I'm a failure, that I'm not good enough, I got law degrees, and world championship titles, I'm driving great cars, I have a beautiful husband and family, but yet I feel like a failure, mm. and it was because everything was built on performance, a workspace mentality, 
being accepted by the world, people pleasing. And it, it almost, it almost drove me to the loony bin. Honestly, I remember <laughs> curled up in my closet, like just crying at control uncontrollably. And my husband's like, you need to go get on some drugs or something. <laughs> Like, he is that wonderful it. supporter. Right, he saw like, it in you. Wrong? Yeah, you yeah. get some drugs. <laughs> like, like, I don't know how to help. <laughs> like, go see a pro, babe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. like, go get something. Yeah. Get some dark chocolate. He's always throwing dark chocolate at me. Hey, this is supposed to, to help with your serotonin levels. I was like, I'm just getting fat. <laughs> so, that's yeah. like, you know, like, in my heart, I'm like, oh, that's kind of sweet. But then when it's like the 12th chocolate bar, you're like, all right, babe. All right. So <laughs> just bloated now. Right. What did you do? Yeah. So I, it just set me on a journey to realize, okay, I've been to church my whole life. But if this is all there is too, you know, there's got to be more than sitting in a pew. There's got to be more than saying, thank you, God, for this win. There's got to be more than just, I mean, having eternal life is fantastic, but I didn't realize God wanted us to have an abundant life here. And that mm. he had, Jesus had come to destroy the works of the enemy and his works are to still kill and destroy, to manipulate, to lie, to tell you you're not good enough, to tell you you must perform more to be accepted by the world and to be accepted by God. So my transition started through all these surgeries. Also, all this time, I was traveling all over the world competing, and I skied for a Christian company. And the owner of that company, Mr. Ralph Maloon, he passed away about two years ago at 101 years old. And he was my spiritual father. And he used to chase me down like at these U.S. Opens, U.S. Masters. And, and he'd have tracks in his little front pocket. And I was like, oh, Lord, here he comes. And he'd come to me and he'd say, Christy, next week we're going to be in France. So we're going to be in Russia. We're going to be in Singapore. And I want you to speak. I want you to share about God. Well, all I knew was, I mean, I was raised in the church. But all I knew was God had given me a talent to ski. What? I knew John three sixteen, yes. And so I'd just be up there saying, use your talents for God. And hey, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> yes. I knew which God was using it. He met me where I was. But during that time, he was developing a gift of standing on stages, the interviews and skiing. And then he was using Mr. Ralph to keep me on my toes. And so I was having all these speaking engagements and things. And because I got a little gift of gab. And yes. And so I'm up at Word of Life Camp in Shroon Lake, New York, and speaking to 500 teenagers. And God got a hold of my heart. Because in those kids, I always tell people, just like Timothy, Paul said to Timothy, don't let anybody look down on you because you're young. Yes. Because God used those teenagers to reveal himself to me. I knew about God. I went to tell them about God. They introduced me to a personal Lord and Savior. They showed me the importance of, I didn't know how to read the word, but I'm watching them search the scriptures around bonfires. And I'm like, I just knew I was supposed to read it. And I did the flip open point, point to the scripture of the day. And then it was a check mark. Yeah. I didn't understand how to study the word. I didn't understand that he wanted a relationship. I didn't okay. understand he loved me and he could be trusted. And so yes. what happened is, yeah, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, forgive me for one, not knowing there was more. And I mean, I don't know that that was my fault, but I just, I had the denominational thing down. I knew how to be saved, but I didn't understand the battle I was in. I didn't understand God's love, that he was for me, not against me, that I could trust him. And that's what I always felt that if I trusted God, he would take everything I loved away from me. And that circles back to like you, you talk about skiing being my platform. I thought for sure he'd take that away. He just wanted to use it. Mm. And when I gave it to him, he took it and made my water skiing be more than just a trophy. He gave it eternal value because now because of my skiing, I'm talking to you today. That's so good. And I just want to know, like, right when you were like, I got on my knees and prayed. And for some people listening to this, getting on their knees and praying scares them. It's like, I get mm -hmm. on my knees. Isn't that another religion? Like, you know, like, what is yeah. this? What is this? And what you were just saying is it brought about a place of being 
humble and coming before God and being like, I can't carry this. I can't do this myself. Jesus, you can, you can do the impossible. And so uh, I just pulled up Ephesians 3, 14, and it goes uh, through 21 where it talks about falling on your knees to pray. But it, I'll just read the verse 14. Mm-hmm. And if whoever's listening to this, I encourage you to read 14 through 21. But it says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, we may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Mm -hmm. spirit in your inner being. Okay. I'm going to keep reading. This is good. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded. Oh, grounded, rooted. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Cause you're on your knees. Okay. Rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints. What is the, what is the breadth? Excuse me. I I don't know what version this is. The breadth and length. (laughs) <laughs> and height and depth but That's all that to up. say sorry the bread is, that got me but just to say like <laughs> on your knees being rooted and grounded in love you got on your knees to pray when you were like I'm surrendering all tell me about the process of you not being able to carry it and then you go into your knees why did you do that because I re- I had that aha moment where I realized that I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I had, I had a belief. And so, I mean, I really could, it could be a whole discussion. Was I really, you know, there's the term saved, the born again. I believe I was born again, Mm. but here's what I, but at that moment, it was like, I want a relationship. I want, I want what God wants for me. I want to know him and I want to, experience what he has for me not just religion but relationship and so for me it it really was a kneeling on my knees it could but the main thing you could kneel on your knees and not mean anything it's it's more of a bowing of your heart and you can do that in a portal it you can yeah. do that in your car where you just and, and I listen I've interviewed so many people for our magazine Victorious Living and and I remember like my friend, Kenny Mines and Kenny played with Johnny Cash and Kenny and I go into these prisons together and, yes. and Kenny, Kenny's like, he's driving down the road and he's, he has got his, I didn't even know what a roach was, but evidently it's a leftover uh, marijuana butts, buds and stuff. <laughs> and so he's talking about, he just, you know, he's riding down the road in this major freeway in, in, in California and he's drinking his beer and he's, he's shoveling them around with his feet. He's got his cigarette. He's lightening up. And then in the ashtray is all his roaches have caught on fire. He reaches in his pocket and the wind is down because it's broken and he starts snorting Coke <laughs> while oh he's goodness. driving. And this will give you comfort. This is yeah. happening when people are driving. Oh, geez. But he looked, I in believe the mirror. in Florida though. I'm just saying, <laughs> Hey, he looked in the mirror and his face is covered in white powder mm. and tear streaks are just rolling down that Coke. And he pulled over and right there, he just surrendered. And so it it wasn't getting out of the car on his knees. I think that is a posture that if we can take, that's great. But it's a posture of your heart and your mind where you just, he surrendered it. He's like, God, it ain't working out my way. And that's Mm -hmm. how I was. It wasn't working out my way either. And even if it was by the world standards, I had everything that the world would say would make you happy, but I didn't have Jesus. And if you, I had a belief in him and here's how I, I got to put it in some ski terms and you'll like it cause you're a ski girl, but I'm a wannabe Christy. <laughs> you're a wannabe, yeah. <laughs> we would call you a weekend wallier. Yeah. That's so, me right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you picture like you're up, you're there on a dock. Okay. That dock is that place um, where you're kind of making the decision. Are you going to go? Or are you not going to go? Or are you going to get connected to the boat? And so here's what I was like. I was like a skier who walked down on the dock. I looked at the boat and I'm like, that boat's got power. And it's got the power mm. to save me. And that was, boat was God. And Jesus is the rope. He threw out a lifeline and I grabbed it because I knew with all my heart that we do. The Bible says there's one way to the father. The only way is through the son. Yes. I knew that. I knew John three sixteen with all my heart. 
And so I received that for salvation. But what I never did was get off the dock and say, hit it, God. Now hit mm. it's what I used to say to the boat driver. I would say it a thousand times a day because I, I would it. fall and fall and fall. Yes. And so here's, you know, there's the Christian walk is not about perfection. And I've learned that the hard way because perfectionism was my disease. <laughs> it is about being perfect in your love for the father and perfect in your perseverance to keep saying, hit it, God, hit it, God, hit it, God, instead of I quit it. Or instead of saying, hit it to some other power source, which is what I was doing. I was like on the dock, hanging on to God, but over here, hanging on to these other power sources, my, my awards, people, you know, my degrees, money, all this stuff. But you can't go with God and hang on to the world. And it says in James that a man with divided loyalties is unstable in everything that they do. And that's how I, I would describe my walk. I was, I was unstable, you know, and I had everything in my hand to experience that victorious life. And like you're talking about in Ephesians, um, Ephesians 3, you want that be rooted and firmly established. That's the yes. complete opposite of being unstable yeah. it is because you are rooted and firmly established in god's love yes and then it says may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width and height and depth and breadth or whatever you said <laughs> of god's love and at the beginning of ephesians it says as all god's people should that we would understand how deep his love, why don't we get off the dock and say, hit it to God? It's because we do not know, we do not truly understand who he is, that he is for us. His power is for us. He's not against us, that he can be trusted. If we believe that, that he loved us, then we get off the dock. And that's why I didn't, because of fear of man, fear of failure, fear of looking foolish, fear of failing God, fear of what God would ask me to do. And so I stayed and missed out on running the course of life with God. I may have had salvation through faith, but I wasn't experiencing the plans and the purposes that he had for me, that if I had known about going into prison, like that would be part of God's plan. That would have scared me to death. But by the time it was revealed to me, I couldn't wait to go because I knew I was on an adventure with God. Wow. How he opened those doors and his timing, like how his you just timing. said that, how you just, I mean, I would never imagine a professional water skier, a world champion, like you don't just ski in USA lakes, okay? <laughs> you know, world champion water skier to going into a prison and talking to people who have committed, who knows, crimes, just heinous crimes, who knows, you know? And God has given you a platform to where they can relate to you. How does that happen? How? How does that happen? I'll call to the Lord one, but... You know, I knew that it was a God set up appointment. I knew it was something he was calling me to do for, and I'll just share that real quickly. I, the Lord, as we've already established, had really been doing a work in my, my heart and my life in my early 20s. I'm 50 now. So it was like in the mid twenties where I really started all those surgeries were starting to come and my speaking at word of life and really just starting to realize skiing is the tool. It's not the end game. <laughs> it is the tool God's given me. And so I had started a ministry called In His Wakes, and we use water sports as the platform to connect people to the power source of God. And so that started in 03. That's still going on. We work with tens of thousands of at-risk youth across the United States and even internationally, cool. connecting them to God, helping them say, hit it to God, to identify him as their power source, all the things we've kind of talked about. And yes. so that was all going great. But then the Lord just really put on my heart to start ministering to people who have been knocked down in life, okay. who have fallen in life, who don't know how to get up. They are losing hope. They, and, and I didn't quite know how he was doing it, but one way he, he put on my heart to start telling people's God stories, start giving testimony that no matter what, God is the answer and that he can help you get up. If yes. no matter 
whether you have fallen because of your own mistake or whether someone knocked you down, someone cheated, the circumstances were just rotten, whatever the reason you were down in the water, God's like, I want you to write these stories, tell people stories, because in Revelation, it says that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. And people, yes. think, people don't need to hear my story. No. Your story of God's goodness, what he delivered you from, is nothing to be ashamed of. It is, it is what helps people understand, one, they're not alone in their struggles and that there's hope. Mm -hmm. And so I was writing that magazine, had no idea why, no idea how it was to get paid for, what it was even supposed to be for. He just like the name's Victorious Living's all I knew. And I just started being faithful, doing what I knew God had told me to do and kept doing the in his wakes ministry or whatever. Well, one day I get this letter from an inmate and his name is Bill. And I knew Bill from the water sports world. He had been a professional boat driver for the wakeboard tour. Okay. And he was also a Christian. Um, and he would speak at some of the church services we would hold at these pro events and things like that. That was always awesome. And anyway, Bill had a, a, secret sin and that led to a big moral failure that led to him being locked away for 15 years. Oh, wow. And during about halfway through that, he reached out to me. Someone had sent him the magazine. I don't know who he reached out. He's like, I love the magazine. I love what you're doing. And he's like, I'm sorry if I've caused any problems in your ministry. Cause he was associate. He was in some, you know, some of the platforms that we had evangelistic events and things. Mm. So I just felt like the Lord saying, go visit Bill and just go love on him. So I asked my husband and he gave me his blessing. He's so supportive of everything that the Lord's asked me to do. And it's truly a, a family ministry. Though Tim may not go in with me. He's, he's that foundation, that rock. And, right. and um, anyway, so I went down to Miami prison and federal prison and just knew when I stepped into that reception room that God was up to something. Cause by this time I'd been walking with him for a long time. I had made so many mistakes in my previous ministry, getting ahead of God. I was like, that's like getting ahead of the boat. You just sink. And yes. so I oh, knew. Oh, preach. <laughs> Hold yeah. on. I was like, Sorry, that was there. good. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I, it's like getting ahead woo. of the boat. Okay. Or try to ski with hanging on to the boat driving wheel, the steering wheel. That don't work either. So no. get behind the boat and follow me. So that's at this point, I was like, okay, Lord, I can see you're up to something, but I am not rushing in. I'm just going to watch and listen. Show me what you want me to see. And while I'm talking to Bill, man, he's talking to mile a minute. I was there for hours and he, and, and it was a great visit. One, I saw the impact, the, the loneliness um, you know, just the impact of a visit and how it can lift someone's spirits. Um, but what I really saw, the Lord was like, look around you. What do you see? And I didn't see inmates. I saw people and that would sound so cliche or whatever, but it was, it was like God had opened up a curtain and showed me what he saw when he looked at the people there that were locked up for all sorts of reasons. And I saw them with their families, these men with their wives their mothers. Mm -hmm. I thought about the hardship because I met a lot of people and talking to people in the waiting area before we got cleared through security. And I was like listening to these mamas talk about, they only had six more years before their son was out. They drove from Orlando mm -hmm. to Miami every weekend. And just, it was a whole world I'd never considered. And God just I, I knew in that moment, I felt as if he was saying to me, I want you to bring that, that message of hit it to prison. I want you to tell these men and women that I love that they are more than a number, that I love them. And no matter why they're down, I'm just like that boat that always came and picked you up, Christy. I'm ready to take them on an adventure of a lifetime. And it's not over. And so I left there weeping. I knew God was showing me something so big, but I never considered what he had. I, I had no idea at that point. I just said, God, you want me there. You put me there. I will go, but I'm not going to go beat down doors because I don't know what door to beat down and I don't want it to be the wrong one. And I've, I've learned you don't want to put yourself somewhere 
that God's not, or he's not sending you. You don't want to be there when it's not his timing. So I just, I just put it there on his, in his hands. And the next, probably a week later, two weeks at the most, I get this call from the Department of Corrections out of Tallahassee. And they said, Christy, we just received your magazine. I don't know how they got the magazine. they would got my book. No idea. I hadn't told anybody. And they said, we would like this magazine in every prison in Florida. Oh my and God. that was the beginning of the magazine, Victorious Living. I always tell people it's not a prison piece. It's just a place where God put it. It's a people piece. Mm. It's just people's stories, people's God stories. Some happen to be prisoners. Some happen to be single moms. They might be people who just, that were pastors who lost their sons and that fell into um, depression. It, it could just, it's the topics that the church a lot of times doesn't want to talk about in just a loving real way. People telling their stories of how God delivered hope to them and threw them a lifeline of Jesus. And so I started within two or three weeks after that, I was started getting invitations to go speak and be a platform speaker for these large national ministries. Next Sunday, like Murph the Surf, Jack Murphy, who mm-hmm. just passed away a, a month or so ago, he became like a spiritual father to me. Then my speed dial, my, and and God just went. This is where I'm putting you. <laughs> like I said earlier, that all of a sudden my boat's getting led into prisons, and we've got a thousand guys like surrounding the boat out on these prison yards with. I'm there with Tina Walenda from the Walenda family with the, t- the tight ropes and high wire acts and the Crevier family that perform all over the world with their basketball shows at the final fours. And the just, it's just amazing. The people God put in my path, the doors he opened. And so now he's just, I don't worry. Like I'm careful but I get to go into prisons all over. We, we mentor thousands and thousands of inmates. Over a million inmates have been impacted by this magazine. It's being delivered in prisons across the United States now. I believe we're now reaching into every state. And so wow. it's being Pretty translated God. now into Spanish. It's just been quite a ride. You know, with COVID, all I had 12 speaking engagements in April going into, because ver- w- I'll fly into somewhere and another ministry will set up me to go in um, kind of with them to minister in prison. And I might go to six to seven, eight facilities while I'm there for a few days. Wow. And so I'm, I'm like a special speaker or whatever. But they all got canceled in April and, and everything's still closed up because of COVID, you know, many, many, many months later. But what happened is with everything closed, the Lord put on heart. He's like, expand, go, bilingual you know, expand the pages, expand. And it's like, this doesn't hit make it. sense, Scott, everything, yes. hit, it. hit it. It doesn't make sense because the whole world's hunkering down and the Lord's telling us, Hey, I got your funding. Does it, you know, you're yes. thinking about your donors who might be losing their jobs and different things. And you're be asking them for money and God brought it different ways. He, we didn't get to have our fundraise two fundraiser banquets. It raised about a hundred thousand last year. Or over that, we didn't get to have that yet this year, but yet we've been able to expand the prisons all over the country, go bilingual, print more magazines, shipping them everywhere for free. And it's just, it's God. And when it he calls God. you to something, <laughs> yes. so you got to worry if he's called you to it, he's put you in it. He's, he's got it. He will not fail you. Oh, that is so good. There are so many nuggets from what you just said. Oh man, I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> Revelation 12, 11, when you were talking about by their testimony. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. you're writing stories into a magazine, reaching people who are facing loneliness. Okay. Yeah. Like raise your hand if you're listening to this and you're lonely in 2020. Okay. Like most people have faced loneliness loneliness in 2020. And you're like, this is the same story that applies to your life. These people mm-hmm. are behind bars in prison, but are you behind bars in your life? Like in your house, right? you know, like listen to stories that give hope that point you to Christ. It's so important what we 
put into our mind, our eyes, what we hear, all the things, the things that we listen to, you know, Mm -hmm. man, and you are doing that using your platform to serve God. And I love how you're just like, I'm not, well, I'm not just like on, you know, I love it. You were on ESPN. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Praise God. I mean, you didn't say it like that, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're not just like, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And then you just like, you know, fall off and you're like, you know, terrible human being, (laughs) you know, we all make mistakes, but it's not just like, and here I am. Thank you, Jesus. Um, the thing that I thought about preparing for this interview is James 2 26. And it's a verse that we've talked about on the podcast a lot, but it's James 2 26. It says, and this reminds me of you for as the body apart from the spirit is dead. So also faith apart from works is dead and your works. If you're listening to this may look different. They may look like, right. may look like Christie's you're a water skier and you're serving Lord, the Lord in print in a prison ministry. But, um, all that to say, just to encourage you, like you're listening and even Christy here, just like, thank you so much for using your humblest of platforms and your biggest of platforms to show God's love and to have faith through that and to be willing to let God see it through. Like you've really taken a back seat to this ministry just by hearing how God's timing is and how doors have opened. And that's really hard to do in an age when you want everything now, you know what I'm saying? Like, bring it to me, Jesus. I I want it now. Give give it to me, Lord, you know, but the waiting, but whatever you bring about, you have to sustain. Yes. And so I want what God brings about because then the burden of sustaining it is on him. But I just want to say one thing. I don't know how much time we have, but no, we're good. Yeah. We're wrapping up. Yeah. Okay. You said, um, faith without works is dead. And I just want to encourage people. You might think, well, I don't have big works. Like I don't have a, a big ministry or I don't have those. These are lies from Satan. I don't have anything to use. I, I just want to share this story. I, God's not looking for big works <laughs> because you can be so busy working for God that you just miss them. And, and I share a lot about that in my book, hit it, which I know we're going to plug yes, later, but yes, but the only reason I bring it up is because I walked through all of that working, working, working for God, thinking that's what I had to do. When God's like, I just want you to be available to do whatever work that I have for that day. And so it might be smiling at a homeless person. It might be stopping. And the Lord says, I want you to go over and give a word of encouragement. Go pray with somebody. I want, yeah. I want you to step out. I want you to trust me. That's a work. You know, it's a work of faith. It's, yes. I, I remember at one of our Ennis Wakes events, there was a young girl. It was an African-American young lady. And she had just gotten her hair done. And she was not going to get it wet. I mean, and it's a different processing. And so I understood that, but I said, would you go out there if she had, if you had a shower cap and she goes, I'll go if you get me a shower cap. I don't think she thought I'd have one. And I remembered I had been carrying one of those free shower caps from a hotel. I was traveling a lot then from four States. I had carried this little shower cap around and I went and gave it to her. And she put it on and later she was giving, you know, she stood up at the end of the event. She went out, she skied, she ended up accepting Christ. Yes. And, and what she said to me at the end, she kind of publicly said, she's, I just want to thank that angel right there that gave me a shower cap. So I didn't miss out on today's activity. Mm -hmm. It was a free shower cap. You've got something. You just got to look because there's an opportunity you know, there was another event with a girl, she had jeans, she didn't have anything. And I was like, remembered a bathing suit I had that my husband asked me, was my daughter, was I trying to wear my daughter's suit? I knew that was not a compliment. So I, I had that in the car, you know, with me. And I was like, you know what? I've got a bathing suit. If you'd like it, the perfect one. able to go. It was a bathing suit. It didn't even look right on me. You know, we all have a smile. We have you know, if you don't have a dime, you've got a smile. You've got yes. a free shower cap. You might have a talent and a gift that maybe you can you organize so you can go help someone at a food pantry organize things. And and while you're there, you build relationships and you use 
the things that you love, to minister hope and healing and the good news of Jesus Christ. That, that's all we're called to do through our works is to, is to love on people. It's not yes. to go out and I got to go work for Jesus. It's a joy to do what he's called you to do. And it's scary sometimes. You're so over your head sometimes, but that's yes. when it gets really fun yes. because you get to walk on some water. Yes. You experience things that people don't get to very often because they're afraid to get off the dock and say, hit it to God. Hit it. Yes. Tell us about your book, um, where we can get it. And because I'm ready to hit it. I'm ready to hit it. Um, you know, I'm ready. <laughs> Where's the book? <laughs> I can't wait to meet you in person. Uh, we're going to be, we're going to be friends past this. Cause I want, I want to get your story for a magazine. So we'll, oh, that's funny. we'll just keep putting each other in our platforms. <laughs> God's well, given us. Yes. And like, thank God for Myra connecting us. I swear. I mean, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience in life, but I really believe blessings come through relationships. Is that weird? Do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yep. Jesus is the ultimate relationship, but I'm just learning more and more in my walk. with it's called Christ. the body of Christ. Make, connections makes um you know we help each other and um okay. for the glory of god but yeah the book's called hit it and uh, i wrote it a while back i had a first book called running the course and we do have that and you can i don't know if i have it publicized but you can reach out to me through our website and i'm happy to get that to you okay that is a really great book it was published by um, broadman and holman and uh, but the second book i self-published called hit it and that's really it's my journey, everything I've shared with you today and more about coming through that perfectionism of being a performer. Um, and it has like a little a de internal, not a devotional, but a reflection part at the end. I've got people using it for small groups and things like that, but cool. that you can get through Amazon. Just hit it by Christy Overton Johnson, K R I S P I. Right. Uh, and then we are setting up a merch page on our website, but, um, Anyway, we'll be able to get it all there, but you can just get it through Amazon. That way I don't have to ship it. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just, it's just a great read. And what the Lord showed me as I was writing, finishing that up, he's like, you know, in 35 years, this is what it came out in the, in, in the preface or whatever. It's like in 35 years, I water skied and I fell every day, but I, be I became a world champion in the midst of those falls and failures. Why? Mm -hmm because of that persevering spirit to say, hit it. And so the whole book is about coming to the place to say, hit it to God. And that again, you know, it's not about the being perfect for God because he knew we couldn't be. That's why he sent his son. So I, I think you'll enjoy it. It's um, I've got friends that have uh, attention deficit disorders or dyslexia and they don't call me these are adults they're like this is the first book i've ever read they're so excited yes, praise <laughs> the lord it's awesome yes. yeah praise the lord she's yeah. like and i couldn't put it down just because you can identify with it and you know you mentioned prisoners being able to identify with me i mean probably 90 some percent have never skied yeah and uh, never even seen what i do and and, but the thing is they can relate, everybody can relate to your dreams being dashed, to falling, to making mistakes, to being knocked down, to the circumstance, like, you know, I'd step out on the lake and a monsoon would blow up oh. and the conditions oh. would just stink for you. And you've flown all the way to Australia and here's the King Todd happening there on the Yarra river and you're falling like flies and you just spent much training. And so no matter why you're down, God's just saying, get up. And so that's why people can relate to the story because everybody can relate to being, to hurting, to being knocked down, to being forgotten, to feel like you're in waters over your, your head. And so I get to take those analogies from all those years of water skiing and God just gives me beautiful pictures of him getting in the water and rescuing us and yes. getting us and pulling us up and freeing us from the things that are holding us back and keeping us in the water and all that's in that book. And, and it's on, like you mentioned, the more Mondays on the YouTube where I get to just teach yes. the word kind of like we're just doing tonight. It's just, it's not a real structured thing. It's just wherever the Lord takes us in his word and he's just fun. 
he's just a lot of, I guess it's okay to say God's fun. <laughs> yes. And Myra too, she's big about like, go out and have fun. You know, she's a pastor. Yeah. She used to be a news director and anchor, mm -hmm. all the things within journalism that you can think of. Myra's done it. And her thing is like, serve God and have fun. And, it, and you, you know, it talks about in the Bible delight in the Lord, you know, serving God is something we should do with a smile or just like living life, <laughs> you know, just yeah. like in general. Um, but too, yeah. Christy, I wanted to ask you, um, we always, you know, ask how we can connect with you and we'll, I'll ask that next. But the one thing that I love to ask our guests is what is a Bible verse that's helping you through this season? Hmm. Just constantly remembering, well, I guess even like right now, let me just bring like Psalms 23, that the Lord is, he's the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. And because of that, I don't lack anything and I will never lack anything. And he's watching over me. He's caring for me. He's, he's tending to my wounds. He's defeating the enemy. He's guarding me day and night with his very the life of his son. And so I, I just think I've really studied that scripture a lot. In other words, just that how good he is and that none of this has caught him by surprise. He's God and he's omnipresent. I mean, he's everywhere. He's all knowing. He's all powerful and there's nothing that he can't handle. And so I just think that brings me just continued peace and Today I was just walking and it's like, Lord, I just thank you that I have joy. Yes. I have joy and the joy of the Lord is my strength and the peace that he gives me because of his word and the relationship I have, it guards my heart and my mind so that I'm not afraid. And so I guess I just give me about five or six scriptures. But That's good. I'm like the just Lord. Just knowing Christ who he is. Yes. Yes. I don't, I shall not want Shall yes. not want. Oh, that's so good. I'm so encouraged by you. Like God has a fire in you. And I'm like, can you just like do a little wildfire over here in my heart? Like bring that over here from North Carolina down to Pensacola, Florida. I need some of that wildfire. That is awesome, girl. You are on fire. Um, well, okay. I think um, embers, hot embers make each other the flame bigger. And so you're, you're lighting my fire and you're putting some fuel on it. So yes, you've got, you've got quite a spirit of God in you. And I just want to encourage you that you have a gift of your, in your interviewing. And I know we're still in the podcast, but you need to know that, that you're listening to the spirit, you're going with it, you're enjoying it. And your, your words are going to touch a lot of people. Well, I have cried throughout most of this podcast, <laughs> so because <laughs> like what you've said has really broken me, and so in a, in a good way, and um, and I just really appreciate you. So thank you so much, and we want to connect with you. So how do we get in touch with you, Christy Overton Johnson? Well, an easy way is just go to VL for Victorious Living VL Mag. Let me type it in, make sure I got it, dot .org. I am okay. pretty certain that's what it is, blmag.org. Okay. And um, yeah, just, you can connect to us through that. You can um, find out more about our ministry. I love to come and speak at whatever, whether it's a prison, whether it's a school, whether it's your business. I, I the, the message is just transcends ages and races and genders and different backgrounds and so I just always welcome that opportunity but I do want to encourage people if you know it, there's a prison in your area I mean this is a free publication yes. that we send in um, all over the country but you might know somebody too you'd be so surprised at how many people have been impacted by incarceration and so if you want to go and get the magazine for yourself at vlmag.org, but you can also, if you get it, it gives it to an inmate. It's kind of like that Tom Shoe approach, you know, you yes. buy one, you give one. And so you, any really level of donation will send you a magazine, but we say, especially for a level like 25 or more, we're able, every dollar that we get, we get to send a copy in and that copy stays there for many, many years, and it passes from hand to hand to hand, Genius. and now that it's bilingual, we're able to reach the 32% of the population in 
prison that's Hispanic. And, um, you know, we're not just sending that magazine. It has the good news of Jesus. It leads people to Christ, but we have discipleship. So when you're sewing into this and you're sending that magazine in, you're connecting inmates with these stories of hope, but also a ministry that's going to walk the incarceration journey with them. Mm. That's going to mentor them through correspondence. I send them Bible studies every quarter. We connect them to in-depth Bible studies, but also transitional services when they get out. So if you know somebody, reach out to us. And if your church doesn't have a prison ministry, we can be your prison ministry. Okay. We have, it's just, and we have churches doing that, that are supporting us as their, their local mission or their mission, but they send magazines into prisons in their state. And then their churches are, we have these events called shine bright and right. They, people come together and they respond to the mail we receive and it gives them a ministry. So if someone's interested in finding out how our victorious living prison outreach can be their church's prison outreach, we welcome that. And yes. we're commanded as the body of Christ to remember the least of these. And Jesus says, when you visited someone in prison, you did it unto me. And so um, anyway, man, Okay, I just got like a Jesus shot. I'm like, woo! Okay, this has been awesome. <laughs> awesome. Victorious Living. There couldn't be a better name. Victorious Living. Wow. Okay, thank you for everything that you do. Christy Overton Johnson with your ministry. It's just fabulous. And we, is there anything else that you want to share before we wrap up? No, I just look forward to get to know you more, sharing your story and oh. seeing what God has in store for you too. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. Oh man, life is fun. Thank you so much for just being that spark. It's so great. Um, and we always pray at the end of every podcast. We pray in Jesus name, Lord, I pray we decrease and God, you increase in our lives. Amen. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness, you guys. I am a huge fan of Christy Overton Johnson, if you can't tell. She's awesome. You know, grew up on the lake in a whole different way than how I grew up on a lake, but that's okay. She is using her platform to broadcast God's love, and that is what we're trying to encourage you today with, and just thank you so much for being here. You matter. You're important, and I wonder if God shook your heart in this interview He shook mine for sure. I mean, there were times I was listening and there were tears coming down my face. So Isaiah 7, I read it today and man, I had to read it to you. I did not know my heart would be shaken like this, but in chapter 7, verse 2, and you know I'm going to butcher the name, so stick with me. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim, so the heart of Ahaz and his people were shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. Were you shaken by this interview? I'm curious to know if your heart was shaken after you heard what she said about hit it. And then it keeps going in chapter seven. These are God's words to Isaiah. Be careful, keep calm, and do not be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. Okay, so he's talking about firewood, you know, this is a long time ago, all this. The context of the word is true in what is happening here. I want you to hear what God says about a shaken heart. They are shaken, okay? They're shaken from this. He says, be careful, keep calm, and do not be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. Do not lose heart because of two or one or a million little things that are ruining or trying to ruin your moment. Listen, it says, be careful, keep calm, and do not be afraid. Do not lose heart. And I encourage you today with whatever you're facing, if you feel shaken by this or that, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. Insert whatever this thing is that's bothering you. Be careful, keep calm, and do not be afraid. God is good, and he's awesome, and we can't do anything without him. And life can be crazy. Your mind can be mixed up. But as long as our foundation is in Christ, just keep pointing yourself back to Jesus. 
when the world wants you to look at this or that or confuse you this way or that way, God's word stands firm and it is alive. If you read this text and let it live inside of you, that's the Holy Spirit. And just let him work through you by his word. Even if it says something like, do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. You can relate to this text and it creates life change. Do not be afraid. I hope you all have a great week. Thank you for listening. Colossians 4.2 says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So I'm just so thankful for you guys for listening. Please share this with your friends if you want them to get encouraged. Pointing you back to God's word is our goal in a relationship with him. There are other podcasts out there that are pointing you back to Jesus. If you listen to this one, you might listen to other podcasts. So we're ending this podcast today a little different. We're ending it with an advertisement from my brother-in-law, Pastor Dustin Woods at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. You all know Ansley, his wife. She's my sister-in-law. She gave the message last Easter. So this 2020 and Easter, she gave the Easter message. And it's one of our most listened to podcasts. So Pastor Dustin Woods at Grace Bible Church talking about their podcast. I encourage you to download it and listen to it because they're pointing you back to Jesus, pointing you back to God's word. And that is what it's all about. And then we walk by faith. We walk by faith, man. Oh, this is good. Okay, here we go. Take it away, Dustin. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon.